Moza is continuing its campaign of releasing new and updated products, and today we have the R16 wheelbase. Now the main updates here are gonna be in the form of connectivity here at the back to make it more modular and capable with a lot of Moza's other accessories, but there are some other things to talk about as well. So let's dive in and take a closer look at the R16 wheelbase. Hey everyone, I'm Jordan with 9to5toys. This does join all of Moza's other wheelbases that range from the entry-level R3, which isn't quite available yet as they finish some licensing with Microsoft, all the way up to R21, which looks very similar to the 16, but just packs a little bit more power. So coming in at $800, the R16 is Moses' second most powerful wheelbase, and it is compatible with their ever-expanding catalog of accessories and wheels as well. So the R16 can deliver some incredible power, up to 16 newton meters of torque, while also acting as a hub for all of those accessories. And compared to the R3, R5, R9, and R12, the R16 and the R21 have a bit of a more futuristic, they call it supercar-inspired design. So you see there's a little bit of a two-tone color here here with some glossy black and some matte black on top with some bright yellow accents as well. And so overall, this design doesn't stray too far from the first version. The big changes are with the ports here in the back. Moza has expanded the connectivity of the R16 V2 with a port to accept other Moza peripherals like a shifter, pedals, handbrake, emergency stop, and a dash. Because all this will connect here in the back and then you just have one cable connecting to your system, that means that this will also work with Xbox with a compatible wheel. And we had the R3 with the Xbox wheel, which did work, but Moza has uh, since held off on releasing that with the recent licensing things that Microsoft is requiring for different controllers. So we're still waiting for the full release of the R3. Once they have that, I'm sure we will see some compatibility for Xbox as well. So make sure you are subscribed so you get a notification because I'm sure we'll be talking about that when it comes out. Also, if you wanna see me using this live, make sure you're subscribed for one of our live streams. I usually hop on Wednesday evenings and do some sim racing. Lately, it's been Forza Motorsport. So get subscribed, hit the bell icon to get a notification when we are going live. And as the name would suggest, the R16 can produce a max of 16 Newton meters of torque. In my experience, this is hella strong. I typically have this turned down when playing Forza Motorsport and Assetto Corsa Competizione, which were my two main games for testing the wheelbase. Having a higher max torque can give more fine detail when it comes to changes in grip, but it can also be hard to wrangle when it's turned up way too high. On ACC, it was nice to be able to turn down the force feedback and ensure that there was no peaking in the force feedback meter down in the bottom right of the screen to ensure that I was getting all the details without losing any information. Beyond power, the R16 boasts aluminum construction, 262,144 points of resolution, 1000 hertz refresh rate, and four front-facing holes for Moses' front mounting bracket. I don't have a cockpit that supports the front mounting bracket, but I would imagine that cockpits that are robust enough to support that, this would be a welcome feature. Additionally, like all other Moza DD wheelbases, the R16 has infinite rotation. There are hard stops that can be programmed in and adjusted through Moza's Pit House app, and with 16 Newton meters of torque, those virtual stops feel much more realistic than some of the lighter weight wheels. And some other features come into play when you are actually using using the wheelbase. One of those is the hands-off feature. This actually came in handy quite often for me. Upon starting Forza Motorsport, the wheel could start to shake left to right pretty aggressively, and thankfully this hands-off feature would stop the wheel from continuing this movement while it loaded into the main menu. Additionally, Moza's next-gen Force 2.0 algorithm helps to provide realistic feedback in-game. Match that with the power that this wheelbase can produce and the speed at which it can adjust, the R16 provides great feedback in games like ACC. And swapping out wheels is also very easy with the quick release system up here. Moza is still expanding its offerings when it comes to wheels, and so I'm sure we'll be seeing more releases. And I've been testing it with the GS V2P, which is a GT style wheel, tons of knobs and buttons on there, and it's easy to pop on here, but if I wanna go over and do some drifting, a GT style wheel isn't the best for that. So very easy for me to pop that off, put on one of the rounder ES wheels that I had from like the R5 and the R3, and then I can get to drifting with a more rounded shape. I've been using the R16 mainly in the GT Racer cockpit and a little bit in the play seat trophy as well. So as far as flex, the GT Racer is rated, I believe up to 13 Newton meters is what they uh, recommend with that. And so 
Uh, this can do a little bit higher peak torque, but I usually have it turned down. And any fletch that I noticed was a result of the cockpit rather than the wheelbase. Going side to side, it felt extremely rigid with the GS V2P wheel on here. So this quick release system and stem feel very solid on here. So overall in use, the R16 has been an absolute blast to use. The power it can produce is incredible. I found it smooth for both Forza and ACC. It can give a very accurate feel of grip, but also also some big feedback when it comes to curbs with some high frequency vibrations. One thing that surprised me is that I found myself really needing to dial up the damper to prevent any sort of wheel isolation, more so than I remember doing with other wheels like the Logitech Pro wheel. Now I'm not sure if that's because, you know, the speed at which this can move because it is insanely fast, but to really, you know, tune out that wheel isolation, if I take my hands off the wheel on a straight at higher speeds, I feel like I had to have the damper at least at 50%. And that is through the Moza Pit House, not necessarily in game. And especially when drifting, I felt like I had to have it even more than that. I think I have my drift setting at 60% for the damper. So that was a little surprising, took some getting used to, and took me a little bit of tweaking to try to get that figured out. So this bass felt absolutely great when I was playing games like ACC. You know, on Forza Motorsport, Using a wheel isn't the way to be the fastest on there. It really still seems like a controller is faster, but I have so much fun using a wheel on that game. And while some tweaking inside of Forza is required to get the best out of your wheel, once you do that and get it dialed in, you can have an absolute blast on a wheelbase like this. And moving on to the adjustments within the Moza Pit House app, there is quite a bit you can tweak in here. Since it is an infinite rotation direct drive wheelbase, the max steering angle can be set along with road sensitivity, feedback intensity, max wheel speed, wheel spring strength, and wheel damper. The adjustments don't stop there though. With the advanced settings tab, with a max output torque limits, hands-off protection, natural inertia, wheel friction, and speed-dependent dampening options. And two more tabs reveal a feedback equalizer, much like a headphone EQ, and a bass feedback curve. And so there are a lot of settings to play around with in here. Moza does provide some sort of presets you can select from the wheelbase home screen. And digging around through some of the different preset folders, you can see that there are different presets for different titles on some of the other wheelbases. So I think as this is a newer updated wheelbase, they are still updating some of those presets. That being said, I reached out to my contact and said, hey, do you have any notes for Forza Motorsport to try to get things dialed in there? And they had a detailed list of where to set everything for Forza Motorsport. So they have that data. I would imagine that will get built out, but it's also very easy to export your own settings. So if you find something you really like, you hit create preset, choose which category you want it to be in, give it a name, and it will save that. And then you can recall up your favorite settings at the push of a button. So the wheelbase is extremely powerful. Typically very smooth. You can feel there are just a couple little notchy sections when you get to, I don't know, maybe like 10 degrees or something like that. You can feel just a little bit of a notch in there. So it was never something that I really noticed when I was actually in game, but you know, just playing around with the wheelbase itself, you can feel that a little bit, which is a bummer. So it's not like a deal breaker, didn't like pull my head out of the game when I was in a race, but it's definitely something that you can notice on this wheelbase. So $800 for the Moza R16, when that puts it right up against the Fanatec Club Sport DD, which is also $800, but comes in at 12 Newton meters of peak torque. So the Moza can do a little bit more power there. You know, still in my mind, I see Fanatec as sort of this like, you know, premium tier with a ton more options for wheels and pedals and accessories. But I also see Moza as something that you can save a little bit of money on and maybe get another accessory if you want to. But also they are ever expanding and making a bigger ecosystem. You know, right on the heels of reviewing this, my contact emailed me with something else that they want me to test out that they're gonna be releasing here soon. So Moza is constantly innovating, constantly releasing new products, and it's pretty exciting to see you know, how quickly this is growing and some of these new offerings that they have. If you have a less powerful wheelbase and have been really craving a little bit more power, I think the R16 is a great way to go. And this new version, with this, with this expanded connectivity back here, that's gonna set you up in the future for adding more accessories and being able to use them on more platforms once Moza actually nails down the Xbox compatible wheels. That being said, you know, you can get a whole bundle with the R5 that has a wheel, a five Newton meter uh, wheelbase and has pedals 
for $400, I believe, for $450 maybe. Uh, check the link down below. We do have a little discount coupon if you wanna pick that up. And that is probably enough for what most people are gonna be doing when it comes to sim racing. A lot of people say that, you know, five newton meters is enough. But if you find yourself wanting more torque, really being able to dial it up and, you know, kind of set it so you're not necessarily reaching all that peak, but you know, operating in a safer sort of middle ground, something like this, the R16, I think it's gonna be a great option for you. And once again, follow the link down in the description if you wanna get a little bit of a discount on this or on any other Moza gear. All right, well, that's gonna do it for our review of the Moza R16 wheelbase. Once again, subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon to see when we're going live so you can catch a live stream, see me using this live, ask me any other questions about it or any other gear that we've been using and just have some fun playing some sim racing games. But thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up so other people can find it easier and consider subscribing. I am Jordan with 9to5Toys.